Hey everybody, in this video I will give you an introduction into how to model with matter balls. And this will be preparation for our introduction into sculpting with three-dimensional meshes. The first object which we will recreate is such a simple toy like this. And what's actually a matter ball? I have few videos lined up which I will show you and there you can see what can be done with it. When we take a look at this object, you see the we have spheres, we have cylindrical connections, and then the connection is very fluid. So this is something we can do via metaballs. Uh, think about when we model with metaball, we have the shape of a sphere, cylinder, a cube, and they act like water droplets. That means when they get close, they will flow into each other, which is kind of cool. So let's take a look at how this actually works. So I have here three examples. This is more character modeling. So there is a pill with rounded caps. You would say, well, it looks like a um, cylinder. And then there's a sphere. And you see when he moves the sphere, how the software calculates or generates the mesh to blend these two shapes together. Even more cooler will be when in a moment they add another one. You see it doesn't connect and then when it gets close enough then it starts yeah I'm kind of like blending it. It's, it's like it melts it together. Pretty cool. This is a technique that's used quite um, a lot when you want to create something what's called a base mesh then this base mesh at one point will be turned into actual geometry. So we can actually then put this into the sculpting mode and start sculpting on it. It's kind of like working with digital clay. And the sculpt mode pretty much works like the 3D painting. But instead of painting with color, we are using tools to push and pull the geometry. And it's actually very powerful in Blender. Here, the person uses this for a character, but nothing stops us actually to apply this also to, um, well, actually, but it's called hard surface modeling, so to apply this to object design. So here I'm just quickly jumping through a few times. So there is a cube with another cube. You can see how nicely this melts together. There, the person has another cube added. Pretty cool is in a moment that will turn this on into negative. And you see how then this way it actually eliminates its volume from it. So it's kind of like Boolean union, Boolean difference uh, in the fly, on the fly. And then here's a, a cylinder with rounded ends. The nature of metaball is everything is fluid so you don't have hard edges that's the downside but that can also be really be the upside if you want to have this aesthetic and very quickly block something out now you can see you just copy and paste move these parts fill its transitions all the stuff is done on the fly so this is actually really fast and this is a great tool when you want to explore a power tool a product or something more on a conceptual level. And then later we would bring this into fusion and create the, a clean cat geometry. So let's go a little bit further to here, there. Oh, well, that looks pretty cool. Here is one that, I, that one is actually pretty killer. That person invested a significant amount of time setting everything up because it's not only modeled really well. There you can see how everything is just an individual meta ball. Just crazy. Even with, with the fillets actually, or suggested fillets. And there are a lot of funny interface elements there. That's because this whole thing is actually rigged. Let's see, where does he start animating it? I think it's here. 
yeah, there you see. So the whole thing is, is animated. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I agree. Okay, so enough of all this. We have these three files. There's one file and that has some dimensions on it. So there are a few rules actually we need to understand first um, before we actually get started. So let's go to Blender, Shift A, and then we make a meta ball. And there we are, no? pretty easy. Shift D, Shift D, I can make copies of these meta balls. You see here I have meta ball, meta ball 001, 002. What's really important here to understand is, you see I can click these two copies individually and only that mesh is highlighted. And when I click this one, this is the first one I created, those actually are highlighted too. So why is this happening? This basically means that these here are physically children or they can melt together with it. So when I make a copy and then here I call this one Super Ball. No? There you see there's nothing. It does not add to it. And when I turn the zero zero off, then this is turned into a masterpiece. And when I so master my link base, think about it like as a parent. And then um how could I say that? Then I can create children. This looks a little bit complicated. Uh, I agree. But think about it as you have one object that spawns the system because now when we look into here, you see how automatically the geometry is created. And then we can add more water drops to, to this to create our sculpted shape. Okay, so we can also create a meta ball and then we can go into edit mode. Shift D, make a copy. Works pretty much the same. Leaf edit mode, but then this is just one object. No? So this actually works too. And when we're in edit mode, also here we have interesting uh, a green and a red. So the red is for scale. And then the green is for stiffness. So think about stiffness how, well, yeah, no? stiffness. Here is actually our data. So there you see that's the stiffness. And then we, the radius is the, the size. We have also here some other features. This is good when we go to this, maybe 20. You see how this gets smaller and smaller or finer. And then we have threshold 0.3. Point one, point nine. Uh, so think about this as the mm, viscosity, maybe. It's kind of cool how you see how it looks like a magnet. <laughs> so let's maybe make this point one. And then you see only at a later point there, it starts getting together Two, uh, two is actually too much, 0.9. Let's see, Ooh. there you see at a much higher level, they start blending together. Think about maybe a threshold magnetic. It's like this is water and <laughs> metal fibers together. Okay, so we're nearly done with the intro. There's one thing I would like to show too. This is later important because we have to work in scale. And this is something that can very easily be first uh, overlooked. In um, here you see when I, in object mode, I select my masterpiece or or when I select this one and I scale this down, you see how the geometry gets kind of choppy. It's the same resolution of each face, but the smaller it gets, the less amount of polygons I can force into here. When I select 
the masterpiece here and I scale this one down, you see how the others are actually updating their mesh. This is basically happening because it is important that the system can mesh actually the connections nicely. So you need to have among all objects the same amount of mesh resolution. So that's the reason why when I make my master small, the children can get really big. That actually threw me off a lot because I I actually made I made this, I made a really tiny one. And then the next meta ball we create by default is really big and it literally crashed the software. So here's now the workaround to to work precise without this issue and we work actually with small scale objects. So what we will do is we will create our reference and we bring in this image there. Let's make a shift A circle. And then this should be along Y, 3.6 centimeters and 2.4 centimeters. My unit system is set to centimeter. Oh, there it is. So nice and small. And then the image we can scale accordingly. I tried to get the image close. The image is not, or well, the object is not photographed perfectly. So plus minus is okay. Number of G, S, and R. Move, rotate, and scale. I put into position. Let's adjust transparency. So yeah, it looks like. This is pretty good. Okay, very nice. So with this, we established a correct scale for the image. Now we can go ahead, Shift A, and say um, metaball. You see, the metaball is huge. No, and we just scale this one down till we're here. Okay, very nice. Cool. We can go into edit mode and when I custom properties, now when I select this one here, texture space, now we have all these features. I can then actually say, well, this actually should be a capsule or this should be an ellipsoid. So the lip side currently looks like a sphere because we didn't stretch it yet. So there, let's stretch it. This is a tick. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, very good. Very nice. Then I stay in edit mode no? and then um, I could select this one just to show you ways how we can do this. Shift D, move this to there and then we set this to a sphere click on the red ring and I scale this one down till this hits. Shift A ball. I can also simply add a ball. G, move the ball to there. S for scale works the same way. Now we want to add actually an, a cylinder that goes there in between. So Shift A, capsule. Um, there it is. So here's my uh, my radius. So interestingly, you see here we have a size for X. So we can make this nice and big. And then with radius, we can make this nice and small. And you see the center is where the circle is. So I position it right there. And this probably has to be decreased 60 the massive resolution is not very fine so this 20 40 let's set to 20 ah much better okay wow you see how beautiful this starts to look 50 or the yeah maybe 50 okay yeah uh, 45 Stiffness, yeah, 
to maybe. Very good. Before we continue, let's go to look from the front. So if this should be a toy that floats on the water, this is not going to work. This body has to be above ground. And then here, these spheres should be above ground too. And the, the lag here, that needs to be rotated to so R, G, and Z. Move this up. And there we are. Maybe this was a tick too high. There we are, pretty cool. Yeah, not bad, no? So sh uh, shift A, let's make a plane. GZ, I move this plane down and then here, let's see, I decrease the radius, very good. Move this one up to there and then I say, negative. And with that, as you can see, I'm actually flattening the bottom part. Let me see with stiffness, can I do something? Yeah, it doesn't really do much. Very good. Here we want to make sure that this object is not we want this maybe along one axis to be long enough. So here, this is good, but it should not touch actually the other side. So maybe 90, sweet, awesome, cool. Okay, how do we get now the other pieces over? It's actually going to be easy. First, I will select this one, Shift D, go to here, turn this on, rotate there okay now we can see the legs are actually too big so the um the radius needs to be smaller 40 and there 40 okay very nice i want to mirror everything accordingly over so 3d cursor shift s cursor to world origin and then i can select you you oh wait this one is selected select what's in my way Okay, that's interesting. Why do you not allow me to select those? Let's see, selection box. You know, if one way doesn't work, there's always a second way. So those two, I would like to mirror over. So Shift D and Escape, and then Control M and X there. So what happened actually to this one? That's interesting. Okay, uh, good. Let's see Ooh, what the problem there is. Um, B, I can also draw selections, Shift T, Escape, M and X there. B, select actually both, Shift T, X, Control M and Y, very nice. Now B and draw a selection, Shift D, Escape, Control M and Y. So there it worked, interesting. And both, Shift D, Escape, Control M and X. Okay, huh. So, oh wait, you see that? Something was copied there with it all the time. That's maybe why. Okay, Shift D and Escape, R. Ah, okay, so I could rotate it over 180. Yeah, yeah, so that's actually what happened. Um, 
this one year the the thing that always made the the cut somewhat got an influence there very good so let's take a look at what we have we can set this to 10 so we make this the resolution even finer maybe five and it gets super fine and the the design actually has some ears uh, sorry two eyes so let's go back edit mode and how do we do this well we can select a sphere shift d b no i do not want this one and scale this one down <clears throat> Bring this to the front. I'm losing my voice. Amazing. And then we can sync this in. Look how beautiful this works. There. Shift D, Escape, Control M, X. There we are. Sweet. Okay, that's kind of kind of fun, huh? not too complicated. Let's actually save this. Save as desktop, water, flea, there we are. And then I will show you one way how we could do this. But actually, this time we, instead of having everything in one minable, we do this uh, individually. Because there was an interestingly, uh, an, an issue with the, with the selection, as you can recall. So, um, however, there's actually one, one warning here, the way how we, we do this. We will actually sh do it this way. So... Also, now I need a capsule. I also know I need um, a cube at the layer for the bottom and shift A, I need a ball. Okay, and then all those I will select and scale down. Okay, good. So I think if I, no, this is actually the sphere. Okay, so you go to there. What's this one? That's the first piece. There's my ellipse. Ah, there's my cube. So here, there's my my ellipse. Okay, good. So let's rotate this one. Bring this back to the size I need. Very good. Oh, we can set this to 20. There's actually my other object. So I can bring this down. I can go into edit mode, then Y, X. So then Z make this 80. So you see now each individual object I'm customizing and scaling by hand. Very good. And this workaround I did, I basically only did because I know that this is actually a really small object we are working on. If we work on something that's bigger, we don't really have to do it. So the radius is maybe 100. Yeah. Okay. Let's rotate this a little bit. Very good. The nice thing of this approach is we can also work with X, Y, and Z values because we have objects actually. Where is, oh, here, there's actually my my cube. I could give those, for example, names. Whoops. Um, interesting, yeah, I should actually not give this a name <laughs> because then it, it breaks actually the problem 
Uh, it does not. Uh, no problem. It will. It will take it out of the influence chain. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to see how here this cube we can make bigger there. So five, one, I just want to scale this one down more. Maybe instead of a cube, let's make it a plane. Yeah, this works better. Now we can just make this a plane, bring this up there, and then there I know wider and wider and negative. Okay, cool. Very nice. Yeah, and then back to object mode. We can select these two, go to here. Control D and R. So because I can now work in with clones, I can simply rotate everything. Control uh, Alt D, I mean, and R to there. Very good. And I think, yeah, you see now because they are linked objects when I make one copy. Uh, sorry, when I adjust one copy, it applies for the other one. Now, we do not have modifiers here to mirror, but in this case, Alt D, Escape, Control M, X. There we are. Now we have to do just the eyes. And pretty much then that would be it. So this is a second approach. This is more how I work primarily. So I have individual objects to the first one however works too but you notice there is sometimes maybe an issue of directly clicking on a metal ball and it was easier via b or c to draw a selection but that also works very very good and now if this and this is for example a tick to a high we can move this further down and then they create all the geometry for us pretty cool okay that is the introduction into Metabots.